In a tournament of upset, one thing is certain. That wind blowing in from the west. Last year, Arizona shocked the world, but now it tries to defend its national crown. Once again, everyone, I'm Greg Gumbel. Welcome to the Road to the Final Four. Tonight, CBS Sports Live exclusive coverage of the NCAA tournament continues with the regional semifinals. We begin in Greensboro, North Carolina, the East Regional. Top seed UNC will enjoy all the comforts of home, playing fewer than 50 miles from its campus. The Tar Heels take on number four seed Michigan State. Then in the West Regional, it's out to Anaheim, where number three seed Utah makes its third straight Sweet 16 appearance. Facing Utah, upstart 10th seed West Virginia. In our second games, the action picks up in the east with 11th seed Washington against number two Connecticut and out west. Top seed and defending national champ Arizona faces number four Maryland. Joining me in the studio, as usual, Clark Kellogg and coach Dean Smith. Oh, let's talk about the North Carolina game with you, coach. How about uh, UNC and Michigan State? Yeah, you know, North Carolina must stop easy baskets by Michigan State off the offensive board or on the fast break. And then the other hand, uh, Michigan State's an excellent defensive team. They must know where Antoine Jameson is inside. Let the record show that not one pronoun came from the coach. <laughs> As you see some warm-ups taking place. Hey, they're looking good. Meanwhile, what about West Virginia against Utah? I'm very much looking forward to this matchup. West Virginia, a senior-laden team, has a chance because of their style. They play pressing defense, and they've got good inside-outside balance in their half-court game. I think they present a formidable challenge for Utah. All right, Clark and Coach, a timeout. The road to the Final Four will continue after this word from your local station. Coming up, the East Regional Semifinal between Michigan State and top-seeded North Carolina. For those expecting West Virginia against Utah, we will get you to that tip at 7.55. Meanwhile, enjoy the games, everyone, here on CBS. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Bud Light. Pontiac Firebird Trans Am. Conseco by Enterprise. CBS Sports welcomes you to the Piedmont, Greensboro, North Carolina, where tonight the road to the Final Four continues with regional semifinal action in the East. In the first of two games here at the Greensboro Coliseum tonight, the number four seed, Michigan State, takes on the number one seed in the East, the North Carolina Tar Heels. Later tonight, it's the Battle of the Huskies, Washington and Connecticut. The winners advance to the Elite Eight on Saturday. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Sean McDonough along with Bill Raftery, and it's great to have you with us. It has been a terrific year already for Michigan State. The Spartans picked to finish eighth in the Big Ten in the preseason polls. They wound up sharing the conference title with Illinois. But tonight, Bill, they have a huge task against the team rated number one in the nation at the moment, North Carolina. Michigan State has to get back into transition defense and take away that early post up of Antoine Jameson. But more importantly, I think Mateen Cleaves has to play within himself, push the basketball, make great decisions as he blows by, particularly on his wing passes. Cleves runs the show for Michigan State. He's the Big Ten Player of the Year, joined to the backcourt by freshman Charlie Bell. Up front, it's Antonio Smith with Andre Hudson, a freshman, and Jason Klein, a three-point shooter. For North Carolina, the familiar starting five of Shimon Williams and Ed Coda in the backcourt. Anamola Okulaja, Vince Carter, and Antoine Jameson, the ACC Player of the Year, at the forward position. Bill Guthridge in his first season as head coach of North Carolina, 32 and 3 after 30 years as an assistant coach to Dean Smith. The officials are Tim Higgins with Jim Haney and Reggie Greenwood. North Carolina dressed in the white uniforms, Michigan State in green. underway with a bit of a hiccup the ball missed by both Vince Carter and Andre Hudson and this 
time it slapped out of bounds and they'll jump it again a little sugar and water for a double hiccup huh? calm them down and the third time's a charm as Carter's won it back to Ed Coda Michigan State Miniman with the lob and Jamison couldn't catch the lob from Coda North Carolina will run that lob about as much as any team in the country. And they run with a little back screen or a little back cut. Charlie Bell, the freshman, very cool in this Sweet 16 game. And it's 2-0 Michigan State. Important for the Spartans to get off to a good start. Oh, they need that confidence level. You can see just a little screen. They got free, not good defense by the Tar Heels. Both Elijah guarded by Klein. Cleaves starts the game on Poda. Now they're going to try and be physical in the post area. Good rebounding team. Come on, Williams. The one-hander from the elbow. Michigan State. They're 22 and 7 for the year, and they've done it primarily with outstanding defense, and they are one of the best rebounding teams in the nation. Jason Klein guided out high by Vince Carter. And Carter is trying to keep Cleves out of the play. Very important to limit his touches. Klein, an excellent three-point shooter. His spins out. The rebound tipped by Smith to Bell. His shot well short. Williams, nice bounce to Coda. How about that for a delay break? You've got to come up on Williams. That's that transition D. Great recognition. Little dive to the goal by Coda. And as you can hear, most of the 23,000 plus in attendance here are cheering for North Carolina. This arena is one hour's drive from the University of North Carolina campus in Chapel Hill. A little double up on Cleves now. They got a post for him. Cleves in trouble along the baseline. He is again having trouble with the dribble and the shot clock ticks down to six. Nice defense by Okulaja out of bounds. Last touch by Antonio Smith. The rather Andre Hudson in front of the Carolina bench. Well, from Tom Izzo, the Michigan State coach in his third season after 12 years as an assistant to Judd Heathcote. Well, from Dean Smith to Bill Guthridge, pretty good post defense. You got to pry, make a little extra look, and pass to the guide hand. That's our Jai just off the bench. He missed the short one. Outstanding position on the rebound for Antonio Smith as he held off Jamison and the free ball wound up with Hudson. Jai quickly off the bench. There are six starters this season for North Carolina. They rotate based on an alphabetical order, so it was Jai's turn to sit out at the beginning of the ball game. Foul on Michigan State's Charlie Bell. And that's his first. We want to remind those of you expecting to see the West Virginia-Utah game that you'll be leaving us in a few minutes. See the tip. Scheduled for 7.55 Eastern time. You'll be kept up to date on the progress of this game, which is 4-2 in favor of the Tar Heels. Two and a half minutes in. Coda, strong drive. A shot tipped by Jamison and a foul along the baseline. So that was a pretty good checkout. But Caroline went over the top. They're able to penetrate right now. Not good footwork, not concentrating on the individual one-on-one -on -one moves that Bill Guthridge's guys are throwing at them. Foul was on Antonio Smith, his first, and the second against the Spartans. Jamison, that spins out. And the rebound saved by Antonio Smith, who's the Spartans' leading rebounder at 8.8 .8 per game. You can see the elevation on Jamison's release. Very tough to get a piece. Tom Izzo, the Spartans coach, says he's never seen a player get the shot up more quickly than does Antoine Jamison. And tying the game is Andre Hudson, the freshman from Trotwood, Ohio. Great with the pass. Come on, Williams. Picked it out to Carter. A long three and the rebound by Cleves, who snuck in from the guard spot. The Spartans, a fast-breaking team and an offensive foul. On Morris Peterson as he charged over Vince Carter. All the big names, it doesn't matter who you are, for Carolina, they'll step in. You've got to have great control in the open floor. Morris saying, my bad. Well, too many my bads, you get yourself on the bench, but good control. You notice Cleves will give it up early. The other guys make the decision. They better make good ones. The early shooting, Spartans two of five, the heels two out of seven. Three and a half minutes in, the game tied at four. Carter missed the banker, and the rebound 
came down to Antonio Smith. They run their stuff. They've been able to get open jump shots on the foul line. A little high-low here. Into Hudson. Talented freshman. Blocked by John. Williams. Travel. Tim Higgins. The outside official called Williams for a travel as he made a little move just around the foul line. And a good call, too, Sean. That little extra step, mm -hmm. trying to put a little pizzazz into the move. Boy, they come out in droves. Michigan State tardy getting back on that trip. They're very fortunate. Tom Izzo said that would be one of his keys, and Bill Gettler said it was true of his team as well. Both teams need to get back in transition. A little zone now. And Carolina has pared down what they like to do. In fact, Bill Guthrie stole both of his. Dean Smith was in on that pairing down in the summer. Jason Klein missed a two-pointer. Of course, last season, North Carolina started 0-3 in the ACC, and that's when the coaching staff went about the business of simplifying the offenses and defenses, and they've carried that over into this year. Notice Jameson's presentation in the lane. they got to keep him out of there. Deny him that three-second area. Tremendous atmosphere here in the Greensboro Coliseum. And our first time out, the Spartans and Heels are tied at four. Bill Guthridge, you two have a lot in common. Dry wit and tight with a buck. <laughs> but uh, Bill coached in Puerto Rico years ago, and look at this extraordinary beginning this particular year. Great sense of UAC Coach of the Year, for assistant coach at K-State, then with Dean Smith for all those years. But I talked about dry wit. Mm -hmm. Jordan was away from school for a few years. He came back to the campus, and uh, Bill said to Michael Jordan, what have you been doing since you left Chapel Hill? <laughs> Handled the reins exactly as Dean would have. I remember last year we were in Winston-Salem and Dean Smith needed one win to tie it off Rupp's all-time record. And Bill Guthrie summoned us over the bench for the game and he whispered, you know, Dean has a chance to tie Rupp's record tonight. Because <laughs> every media person in the world was there. It has been the major story of the tournament throughout the first week. Juan Wiley the miss. Wiley is the only senior on this Spartan team, so they are going to be strong again next year. Carter held as he went down the lane. CBS Sportsline is the place to follow all the March mayhem. You'll get real-time scores, updated brackets, game previews and analysis, interviews and more. Go to keyword CBS Sportsline on America Online. Team Cleves called for his first foul. And by and large, Michigan State's been able to get back, get their defense set, or rebound, and be solid in their judgments in the open floor. John missed a short one. Off the entry pass from Williams, kept alive in the corner by Carter. Williams, the runner. He is smooth. Shaman Williams, the senior from Greenville, South Carolina. And a great play by Vince Carter to keep it alive and set it up for the guard. Williams was the MVP of the East Regional last year as the Tar Heels advanced to the Final Four. And he's in the running for that award again this year. 32 points in their overtime victory in the second round against UNC Charlotte. Three-pointer missed by Morris Peterson. Uh, Bill Guthrie perfect, the rest of the team struggling. Bill Guthrie's very impressed with Peterson. Switching the D's, a little bit of confusion. Cody gets them organized. Underneath, Otulaja threw it up with the left hand and missed. McKean cleaves the miss. And Jai the rebound. Michigan State and North Carolina in Sweet 16 action. The East Regional Semifinals from Greensboro, North Carolina. The Tar Heels lead by four. Matt Carr, Jai with a miss. And a foul on the rebound action as Carter was sent sprawling. And the foul is on Michigan State's Jason Klein. His first, and the team's sixth. North Carolina has been called for just one. In the second game of our doubleheader here tonight, Washington takes on Connecticut. The winners advance the Elite Eight, and they'll meet at 6 p.m. Eastern time on Saturday right here in Greensboro. North Carolina in a little bit of a hurry. That time they had Carter with Klein. Didn't take advantage. Took the long jumper by Jai. 
team fouls decidedly in favor of North Carolina. They've been called for only one. And Tom Izzo says the big key is the, the way this game is called. North Carolina is not a very deep team. Carter the tip in for his first basket. Michigan State is, but Michigan State also likes to play a physical brand of defense. Uh, Kirk Cousins feels they're in great shape and go the distance, and they've proven it all year long. This is the largest lead for the Tar Heels. And an easy basket for Hudson as he broke through Jamison and Okulaja. And that's passing to the correct hand. Okulaja gamble baseline side, good entry. Inside Carter being defended by Hudson. And Carter made a very tough shot falling away in the lane. How about the catch? I mean, everything about him is attractive to watch. Leaves to Hudson on the court with Klein, A.J. Granger, number 43, and Morris Peterson. Peterson, the left-hander with the smooth jump shot, a sophomore from Flint with his first basket. And Mateen Cleaves has been solid. No bad judgments, good solid play, playing within himself. Carter starting to heat up. Another fall away, this one along the baseline, and Carter has six. Peterson quickly the other way, and he was fouled. They, they should beg for this basket, too. And Tom Izzo's up, begging for it. The ability to enter the post area. You see Okalaja a little bit tardy. The nice direct pass to the baseline hand and the rest rather simple for Andre Hudson. That was awfully close for goaltending. Yes, it was. Tom Izzo was up off the bench asking for the call. Morris Peterson, one of four players on this Michigan State team from Flint. He's out of Northwestern High in Flint. Antonio Smith back in with two fouls. He's another of the Flint natives. Andre Hudson goes to the bench. Peterson, excellent sixth man. Averages eight points and three and a half rebounds. He had nine points in their opening round win against Eastern Michigan. Only four points against Princeton, but was four for four from the free throw line in the final minute 40 in a very tight game down the stretch. And I, I got yeah, that fractured wrist early in the year. He's come around. He's been dribbling the ball right, but they called him shotgun last year because of his shot selection. Good judgment all year long. One free throw by Morris Peterson. It's a five-point North Carolina lead. that 79 team well I think so because they get out and run like we, we used to like to do also um, they have a, a good point guy who likes to push it up and create for people now some, of, some people think that Mateen Cleaves has a little bit of your court presence what do you think well he does he, he's smart he, he, he controls the team he controls the tempo and um, this team is amazing to be as young as that as they are they really uh, come together well but they're playing against the best team in the country and we got to play a perfect game to beat North Carolina. What's included in the perfect game? Well, we got to shoot the ball well, which we're not doing right now. And uh, we can't let them get going. You know, seven-point lead right now. We got to keep this crowd out of it because if we don't, they get a few more points. This crowd will take over, and then it's going to be tough to beat them. All right, Magic, thanks so much. It's so great up here, Sean. Magic's got his pom-pom. It's very cute. <laughs> Talk to you later. All right, Andrea, thank you, Beth. Frank Gumbel, Clark Kellogg in New York, North Carolina with a 34-21 lead on Michigan State. We'll keep that score at the top of your screen while we take you out west to uh, show you where West Virginia is leading Utah by a 13-12 score. And now it is tied at 13 apiece in a game which has seen West Virginia shoot the ball better than the youth so far. Well, they got off to a quick start, made their first three shots, Greg, and they haven't really been able to force the pace yet. And one of the concerns Gail Catlett would have, would have for his team right now is that Utah shoots 76% from the line on the year. Already West Virginia has five team fouls. That's going to be something to keep an eye on in the first half. All right, Clark, we will uh, take you folks out there at halftime, but right now let's get you back to Greensboro. A.J. Granger, Michigan State now 0 for 7 from three-point land. They're not hitting threes, and they're not rebounding. A 36% three-point shooting team. Jamison left alone for the land. 
Wow, that was almost trot time as he sent it in, but great ball reversal. They don't waste any time. Swing it to the reverse side, dump it to the box. Excellent offensive basketball. And stumbling across midcourt was Antonio Smith. He came up limping. Tim Higgins stopped the play for him. And Andre Hudson is going to come into the ball game to replace Smith. Just extraordinary feel for the game as they get it around the horn, showing the dump down. The defense couldn't even react. Started with Shimon Williams with a down and through with the bounce, and then a kick. Bell off to Peterson. Cleaves, another long three, very flat shot. It's kept alive by Granger. Will that count? Yes, it will. And a chance for a three-point play for Charlie Bell. Well, they better, they better get down and help out the big guys. It's one and done on that end for Michigan State. The real problem has been on the defensive end, not checking out. The guard goes down here, Bell. Finishes off with a chance for three. They don't extend the floor particularly well either, Sean. That's why they have to stay in contact. Bell has five. He had a career-high 22 points in their first round win over Eastern Michigan. They came on Charlie Bell's 19th birthday. Down to a minute and a half left in the first half. North Carolina by 12. Harder. Lazy. Jameson won the rebounding battle over Hudson. They do a great job getting to the weak side box. Nice screen across. Established Jameson there. He waited for the jump and the miss. Well, Mizzo felt that Jamison was over the back. Jamison has scored the last eight points for the University of North Carolina. Hudson, too hot to handle for Granger. Cleves bounce intercepted by Jamison. And how about the patience, too? He looked up, he had Williams, saw the defense react, held on. 22nd timeout called by the Tar Heels. <laughs> Michigan State not shooting the ball well because of the dominance of North Carolina and rebounding the points in the paint dramatically in favor of the Tar Heels and Shaman Williams always seems to play very well in the big game. Big, great understanding what they want to do, where they want to get the basketball shot. Penzoil at the half, Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, and Dean Smith will get you updated on the tournament news, all the scores and highlights, plus a look at the West Virginia-Utah game from the West Region in Anaheim. Coming up on Penzoil at the half. How about what Bill Guthridge told us yesterday about Dean Smith? He said, Dean is still very helpful. He said, I ask him from time to time for advice. But now I find I have to be careful what I say around the office because Dean works for CBS. <laughs> well, he finally, well, you used the parking spot, right? Finally got into the office. Uh, I used to give my assistant the parking spot just in case the fans were irate. For those who don't know that story, Bill Guthrie was very reluctant when he named the head coach to use the head coach's parking space or office that he felt those belonged to Dean Smith. After all, they're in the Smith Center. Shaman Williams with a miss. The Spartans run. Peterson missed a short one. Cole to the rebound. Carolina can hold for the last shot. And Carter with a great defensive play. Coda. Try to dump it off for Jamison. They could have helped for the last shot, but Coda saw the opening. Cleaves, Bell, Spartans could hold for the final shot, too. Peterson didn't get the bounce on the three. Out of bounds. Last touch by Carter with 5.7 seconds remaining in the half. And Tom Izzo putting in Klein just to get another shoot around the floor. Jason Klein in. Charlie Bell goes out. Trying to get into Cleve's hand to make some decision. Klein took a look at the clock. Desperation three wouldn't go. They did not make a single three in the first half. Over ten, the Spartans from three-point land in the first 20 minutes. At the end of the first half, the score, North Carolina 38, Michigan State 24. Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, and Dean Smith will be along with Penjoy at the half right after this message and a word from your local station. Pennzoil, specially formulated for today's stop-and-go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. 
Welcome once again to Penn's All at the Half, everyone. Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, Dean Smith at halftime. It is a 38-24 uh, lead for North Carolina, and it would appear the Tar Heels coach are doing a lot of good things out there in the first half. North Carolina is doing a very good job rebounding. I know they were concerned about Michigan State's rebounding, and also uh, they're playing more zone than usual against this Michigan State uh, team. All right, let's talk about the telestrator play that you have picked out for us. Uh, you'll see Carter with a ball on the far side as he has the ball and immediately you'll as he passes it back we'll get a cross screen here four will screen that man in the zone and then you'll see the pass gone on around to five and now five will then throw it to carter going off the screen you'll see the here comes the screen and then right there and then a pretty pass there and how long has this play been in the Carolina playbooks? <laughs> 82. <laughs> Guy named MJ. Okay, Clark. And it still works. They're dominating action in the paint, and they're keeping Michigan State out of transition opportunity. Michigan State 0 of 10 from behind the three-point line. All right. Meanwhile, in uh, the other game going on at the moment between West Virginia and Utah, 6-10 to play in the first half, and Utah has come back to take a three-game lead. They're the biggest U in the world, Clark. <laughs> Brian Lewin. Here he is inside. West Virginia got off to a quick start, made their first three shots. Meanwhile, Rick Majerus watching West Virginia continues to work inside. Damien Owens finds Brent Solheim in the lane for the jam. Utah in good shape after starting slowly in this game. They've controlled tempo, and that was one of their keys, not allow West Virginia to get in an up-and-down game. And, Coach, uh, West Virginia is a team that looked like it was really on a roll coming into this game. They really have been and played great basketball in their first two games, and Utah slowing in tempo could really bother West Virginia. All right, Coach. Meanwhile, uh, that game is in action right now, and uh, let's Let's take you out to the Arrowhead Pond in Anaheim and join the action. 6-10 to go in the first half of play. Utah leading West Virginia by three. Good ball game. Gil Catlett trying to get his ball club to score more points. Utah was the one that struggled early, Gus, but uh, West Virginia was shooting 43% themselves. They started early. Damian Owens is a, has nine points. He's been the guy, but uh, so far they haven't made enough shots. So West Virginia finished 24 and 8 on the season. They are 24 and 8, 11 and 7 in conference play out of the Big East. They're 24 wins, the best in nine years for the Mountaineers. Now by three, Pledger to Glory, along with Lewin Owens. West, backdoor West, and he missed the chippy, and it's snatched down by Dolia. It's about the third layup this Mountaineer ball club has missed. Cross court, Miller got the step down the baseline. What a good pass across the court by Jensen. Youths go up by five. Lewin calling for it, guarded by Dolia. Pledger. No look past Corey with the two-hand jam. I think the Mountaineers, Gus, can continue to beat Utah off the dribble. What that does is bring weak side help. They're freeing themselves up and making good passes for easy two. Miller up the sideline. Nice layoff for Jackson and the easy bucket. When it's in Miller's hands, it's usually pretty good. So Andre Miller. Gives it up to Jackson, 47-22. Great pace in this basketball game. Pledger down the lane, and the kind roll. Yeah. 27-24, Pledger with five, a steal. Owens had it blocked, got it back. Power dribble, Pledger left it off the heel of the rim. Opportunities are there. Eight turnovers now by Utah. Bounce pass, Jackson. And a whistle jump ball is the call. We stay on this end. Well, West Virginia, here's the, the dribble, the penetration, the help, the nice pass, and the easy finish by Gorey. And the Microsoft data bank. Utah, which lost in the first round of the 1994 NIT, received a bid to the NCAA tournament after Arkansas withdrew because of a car accident, and that was their first NCAA title. Meanwhile, Doliak 
Buries the jump shot. He has eight points, 29 to 24. Greg Jones. Solheim forces it up. Blue Collar goes to work on the offensive glass. Senior from Rochester, Minnesota. Doliak, great catch to the bucket and the land. I thought the pass was a little high, but you made the point. Great catch, good hands by Doliak. 31-26. Doliak perfect on the night. 3-3 three three from the field, 4-4 four four from the foul line. He has 10 points and 6 rebounds early in this ballgame. Curse. So high. Steps back. Rebounded inside by the Utes. Miller. Lost it. Outlet pass. Here's Jones. He's got a trainer with him. Foul curse to the hole. And in. Good pass. Good decision by Greg Jones. 31-28. And I tell you what, John, if you're not in shape, don't <laughs> step on the floor for this one. This is back and forth like a tennis match. Utah. The thing they're doing more successfully now is throwing over the top of that press and getting better looks on the offensive end. Pump fake. Hanson. They reverse it. Metalop. He can hit it. And a good block out by Sohan, but he throws it away. And players look tired, Gus. Out of bounds. And it was last up by the Mountaineers. Gail you know, Catlett thought that ball was off Doliak's fingertips. He will not get that call, though. Take a look at the long pass. Andre Miller looking down the floor. And Solheim thinks he's got a beat on this one. Doliak up, goes over the top and finally hits one going to the basket. Here's the defense by West Virginia. 2.46 to go, 31-28 Utah. So Utah with a 31-28 lead, 2.46 to play in the first half. We'll keep you updated. Coming up next, some of you will see number 11 Washington take on number two seed Connecticut in Greensboro in the West Regional defending national champ Arizona will clash with Maryland out of the ACC. All of that is coming up later tonight here on CBS. Meanwhile, we'll get you back to Greensboro for the second half of your game after this message and a word from your local station. Pennzoil at the Half has been sponsored by Pennzoil, specially formulated for today's stop-and-go driving. Stop. Go. Pennzoil.